Hello friends, welcome once more to Class Online. My name is Dami and in this edition we shall look at questions on wave. You know the word wave makes sense, right? Now that word is a word that we are very familiar with but we shall bring a lot of clarity to it because there are many aspects of wave in physics. Now we shall clarify with that in this edition why physics 2013 question number 36 um, 26 to 30 we have a lot of questions on wave that we need to address and at the end of this video you will be at a better point in the understanding of wave now don't forget if you learn something from this video click on like button we like we have a lot to send to you that will better help you understand a lot in physics let's get to number 26 now it says a transverse wave can be distinguished from a longitudinal wave by what now is it by diffraction, reflection, refraction or polarization? This question is simply saying what is the property among these properties of wave? Which of the property, which of these properties is the property that, that a transverse wave can exhibit that a longitudinal wave cannot exhibit? Now that means that all these properties of wave are common to the two of them except one. Only the, the, there is one of the properties that only transverse wave can exhibit and that is which one do you have any idea now actually let's define transverse wave then let's talk about the property all wave um transverse wave is a wave that travel perpendicular to the direction of propagation example is light wave now light wave does not travel straight it travels perpendicularly now if i propagate or send light this way straight like this if you send light straight like this light will not travel like this if you travel like this, up, down, up, down, this is the way light travels. So it travels like a snake, right? That is perpendicular. So transverse waves are waves that travel perpendicularly, up and down, to their direction of propagation. Okay? Now, longitudinal waves are waves that travel on this, in the same plane with their direction of propagation. That means it travels in the same direction with their propagation. An example is sound wave. Sound wave travels straight, but light wave travel perpendicular. So light is transverse, sound is longitudinal because it travels straight. Now all wave can diffract. All wave can reflect. All wave can refract, but not all wave can polarize. And that is the answer. Light wave is a wave that can, like, like, like you can see it here, Longitudinal wave travels was straight. Can you see that? It travels straight. But transverse wave travel perpendicular. That's up, down, up, down, up, down. That's perpendicular. So transverse wave are waves that travel perpendicular to that direction of propagation. While longitudinal are, are waves that travel in the same direction as their as um, um, with their propagation. And that is it. But they can all exhibit all property of wave except polarization. Only transverse wave or light wave, like it is an example of transverse wave actually, can be polarized. And polarization is the ability to make light travel in one, in a straight direction. So look at this now. Polarization is this. Now look at this light. It's, it's not traveling straight, but when it went through this um, polarizer, it could now travel in a balanced direction. Can you see that? So to polarize light is to make the light travel in one direction. Although light does not travel in one direction, but when it is polarized, it travels straight. And that is the answer. So the only property unique with transverse wave is polarization. And that is the answer for number 26. Number 27 says, the superposition of wave to produce maximum or zero effect at the point is known as what? Is it reflection, refraction, interference, or diaphragm? Now, these are all parts of wave. Reflection is the bouncing back of wave. Refraction is the bending or the or this uh, the change in direction or speed of wave when it enters another medium. So refla refraction is the bending or the change in the speed of wave as it changes medium. But interference is the superimposition, superposition of wave. That means the it is the overlapping of wave. Like like if two waves are traveling in this way. They can climb on each other. When they climb on each other, they are superimposing or they are interfering. 
and that's what we call interference. It is the superimposing, superposition, or superimposing, or the the overlapping of wave, and that is the answer to the question. The superposition down. This is just a definition of interference of wave. That means, like you are you have in this picture now. Look, look at this wave now. This one is going this way. Okay, the thicker black one. Then the second one is going right on the same, but they are meeting at the node. Look at where they are meeting at this point. At this junction, they are meeting. They meet here, and then they travel again. They meet here. So that means we say that these two waves are what so they are interfering because they are clashing. It's another example is this one. Look at this one going up, goes down, but the one below goes down, but they meet, right? This is called destructive interference because it gets weaker because they are not going in the same direction. They are going in the opposite direction. Why this one is constructive? Because the two waves are going in the same direction. So it is an interference. Constructive interference is the interference when which occur when the two waves are going in the same direction and it's strengthening each other. But destructive is when the two waves are going in the opposite direction and they weaken each other. And that is it. So the answer to that question is simply um, interference. Why diffraction is the spreading out of wave after passing through a tiny opening? Like if you put light through a tiny opening, if you shine light through a tiny opening, it will spread out. That spreading out is called diffraction. So the answer to number 27 is simply interference. Wave can clash or superimpose or superposition or you say interfere. And that is the answer for number 27. C. Let's look at number 28. Refraction of light differs from reflection in that in refraction, one, at least two media are involved, two, there's a change in the direction of the ray, um, three, the speed of the ray changes. Okay, now which ones are, uh, which one is correct? Is it um, at least two medias are involved or is it uh, there's a change in direction of the ray or the speed of the ray changes? Do you have any idea? Now the answer to that question is very simple. Um, it is actually, let's take a look at this. Now this is reflection. The red one is reflection. It comes this way and it bounces back. So the reflection is the bouncing back of wave. Okay, when it eats an obstacle. Now you can see this is the incident will come in this way normally. But when it got to this obstacle, it bounces. And that's reflection. But refraction is that it will change medium from this air medium. This is air on top. This is water below. So as it's going from this medium, it enters this other medium of water and it changes direction. You can see it's supposed to go straight like this. But it, it changes inward, this way. And that is refraction. It has to do with the change in direction. The answer to that question is simply one and two. There's a change in medium. That means there are two mediums like we have here. Air and water are the two mediums. But also, there's also a change in direction. Like this one is bending, it's tilted inward a little. So it changed. There's a change in direction and there's a change in medium. From, and that is the answer. One and two are the answers to that question. Number 29, which are the following real relations about the focal length, FO, of the um, objective and focal length of the eyepiece of a compound microscope? Is correct. Now, is the objective focal length equal to the um, eyepiece focal focal length um, or is the objective focal length less than the eyepiece focal length or is the objective focal length greater than the eyepiece focal length or is the objective focal length okay, sorry, is, the, is the eyepiece focal length equal to two times the objective focal length do you have any idea which one might be correct now actually the answer is very simple look at the look at we are talking about what a compound microscope and in the microscope one of the eyepiece is much bigger than the was objective because you are trying to look at an object that is smaller and you are trying to magnify it in your eye so if it will get magnified in your eye this is supposed to be bigger while this is supposed to be smaller now look at the object look at the image form much bigger right so this is the that means the objective focal length is smaller than the eyepiece focal length. so the answer to that question is just that the objective focal length is less than the eyepiece. Yes, you can see it in the picture. Eyepiece is bigger. Can you see that? The objective focal length is smaller. Means that the objective lens answer. The objective lens is less 
than the high people, and that is the answer to Jehovah 29. Number 10, the functional difference between a lens and a mirror is that a lens dash. Now, what is the mirror and the difference between a lens and a mirror? Like, I have a picture here. This is a mirror. You can see the man. is the same height, right? It doesn't change, right? But a lens, what can you see? This um, um, fly, out fly, is getting smaller, right? So lens can make things bigger or smaller, but, but a mirror maintains the way it is. So we have, um, one of the things there is that mirror reflect a beam is that a lens, uh, okay, the difference between a lens and a mirror is that a lens reflect a beam of light while a mirror ref refract it, okay? Or is it a lens refract a beam of light while a mirror reflect it? Or is it that a lens absorb incidentally why a mirror transmits it? Or a lens transmits incidentally why a mirror absorb it? Now the answer is very simple. Do you think it is option A, B, C, or D? Which one do you have? Do you think it's correct? Now the answer is very simple. The answer is that the um, lens refract or bend. You know, um, lens is a bent mirror. Lens is a bent mirror like if we have concave and convex lens they are actually bent you know the word refraction means the bending of ray and for the ray to bend the lens or the object that is bending that ray like lens is going to also be bent so the lens refracts the the beam of light why a mirror does not bend it a mirror leaving the way it is it just reflect so a mirror is a reflector why a lens is a refractor that means the mirror um, reflect you like this is Mr. Chukwemeka standing in the front of the glass. You can see a reflection of him, right? The mirror is only reflecting him back, but the lens will bend the image so that the image will change, will be either bigger or smaller, and that is it. So, the simple answer is just B, and that brings us to the end of this video. Don't forget, if you learn something from this video, I want to get more content that will better help you understand things. Click on the like button. We have a lot to share with you that will better help you understand. Until we see you guys, take care of yourself and bye for now.